Hi, I'm Lily. And I'm Julia. We are two high school best friends and college roommates with an interesting dynamic. And we are here to culture each other on different aspects in pop culture. We talk about all things music, movies, musicals, Disney, and more. This is Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Hello, and welcome to the Pop Culturing My Best Friend Valentine's Day special. Woo-hoo! We would like to start out by saying, what are those? These, These are, are clothes. clothes. Also, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. <laughs> All right. That's all that's all you're gonna get out of that. That's what we've been doing all week. We are extremely bored. Yes. <laughs> so Valentine's Day special. We've yeah. got lots of fun things. In it's store all the for same you. thing, just kind of sort of themed. Kind of sort of themed. <laughs> right. <laughs> we did our best. Yeah. Well, all right. So we're starting out with nonsense news. Ding. <laughs> Would you like to go first? Uh, sure. I have a whole lot of nothing for nonsense news. Uh, my first piece of news is that, uh, uh, okay, so today is February 18th. Mm-hmm. It's Thursday. Right. Uh, this is coming out February 19th, Friday. Yeah. So by the time you hear this, Ariana Grande's Deluxe Positions <laughs> album will be out. Nice. It includes the remix. Of that one song. Of that one song. That yeah, with Doja mean. Cat and um, Megan the Stallion. Megan the Stallion. Yes. Yeah. And I think like four or five other new tracks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I forgot that was happening. And then I saw it like right before we started recording and I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else do you got? Uh, I did a speech yesterday. You did? It was such a good speech, too. It like, really, it was very uh, persuasive, and I quite enjoyed it. it. It was fun. Tell them about your speech. What was your topic? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she did a very, very good speech, though. You guys would have loved it. Mm, okay. You have a third story? <laughs> uh, I don't remember what I was going to write here, but it says curse broken, question mark. Curse? Oh, yes. Okay. Your evil love day curse. But is it really? Because I still got that message from my speech teacher. I think it's... I think it's... Now, it's, it's... I think not your a teacher s- is an anomaly, and it doesn't even matter. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you if you don't know, Julia has a curse, an evil love day curse, where every Valentine's Day, something bad happens to her. Yeah. But, here's what I think. This year, it went off without a hitch. It was great. I you mean, totally the day fine. itself was boring because I didn't do anything. Which is great after these awful <laughs> Valentine's Day well, ex- had before. <laughs> so, I think it was a high school curse and now it's broken. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but I think we're fine. <laughs> is that all you have? Um, yeah. All right, cool. So, my first story is kind of like the big elephant in the room. Uh, we've been online. All week. All week. There is so much snow outside. Look out your window. I bet there's snow there. Well, it depends on who you are and where you live. (laughs) (laughs) But if you live where we are, uh, snow and everywhere. We are trapped inside. Um, There's like a new inch of snow every time we step outside. It's crazy. Like the snow, like it it just reloads and there's honestly, honest to God, I don't think I've ever seen this much snow in my life. Same. Like, Honestly, like I've seen it like for a day, it'll melt. It's but at it's least just been there it's at least for a week. five or six inches right now. Yeah, and it's been there for a week. Like we were, we were just outside. I wear rain boots um, when I go out in the snow, and they were pretty high up my rain boots. Yeah. Like how deep in the snow I was. I think it's really cool because you know, again, I've never seen this much snow in it my life. It was awesome. So. Yeah, so we're having a, a great snow week, having Ugh. classes online, getting to sleep in more. Yeah, I can't decide if I love it or hate it. Same. I'm kind of like, I'm bored and tired, and I'd like to go outside and interact with humans, but yeah. also like... I like having um, all my theater work pushed to next week, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I didn't have any ensembles or a lesson this week, so it's just been like, ah, a nice refresh getting to do nothing. Yeah. All right. It's so It's all right. <laughs> my second story is I finally managed to order a Build-A-Bear Spring Green Frog, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is uh, 
a big like it's a hot thing on instagram and i'm sure tiktok too uh, where the build a bear springing frog the first time it was launched it sold out within the hour it was like gone and it's restocked i think twice now before i was able to get it i know definitely once it restocked around christmas like uh thanksgiving and i was finally able to get one and i'm so excited for him to get to be in my arms he is at the mall right now waiting for me to get his sad little frog carcass stuffed so yay (laughs) if you have any name suggestions let me know he already has a name I'm tied between Jojo and Stinky, it's JoJo. but if you have any more ideas, I'd like to hear them. All right. And my third story, I'm not so sure it's going to happen anymore. Uh, depending on weather, uh, I was planning on getting a Pokemon Happy Meal this weekend. Everyone's talking about the Pikachu Happy Meal like boxes. I was the, also supposed to get one this weekend. Yeah. But if weather allows, hopefully I'll be able to go. But we shall see how the snow and ice plays out. I just want the box. I just want to do a bunch of crafts with the box. You want the box. Most people want the cards. Well, no, because, okay, if I'm going to go to McDonald's, I get the food and the box. And Shane gets the card. Ah, I see. I see. Have you heard about the people buying, like, five boxes at once or just buying out all the cards in the stores? Yes, because I was looking up stuff... Do not quote me on this because my brain is not working. I called the Mona Lisa the smiling lady in Italy today. (laughs) But like, but like, okay, I was looking stuff up about like when they're going to stop doing it. And Mm -hmm. now it's like uh, McDonald's is saying that they're not giving away Pokemon cards with every single box now because of that. Yeah. I heard, so, I think I heard that they, that they're only allowing a certain number to be yeah. purchased, like, per party. So you can't buy, like, five anymore. You can just get, like, one or two, like, per children, I guess. Uh, no, I wanted one last, <laughs> we got McDonald's last weekend for mm-hmm. dinner on Friday, and I didn't know about the Pokemon <gasps> boxes, and then we pulled up in the drive through and... And I saw it. I was like, "Mom, I want a Happy Meal," and she said, "No." Oh no! I'm sorry. Well, that's all the stories I got. Well, and then I almost got one Saturday night, mm-hmm. but we got there 20 minutes after they closed. <gasps> <laughs> well, I hope you can get home and get one this weekend. Yeah, me yeah. too. Or have someone bring you a happy meal or something. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to bring me a happy meal. Oh. <laughs> I just need some crafts to do. That's all. <laughs> well, that's all for nonsense news, I think. Yeah. All right. I think so. Oh my god. All right. <laughs> Ding. Cool, cool. Now, what's the next segment? What little world? Oh, yee, yee, yee. Yee, yee. Ding. (laughs) I hate that our worm brains decided to do that at the same time. All right. So, my first two stories come out of Universal. Um, And one of them is absolutely absurd. And I don't even know how to get into it without just saying it. So, story number one. A TikToker slapped a goblin animatronic in the queue of Harry Potter Escape from Greece. Yes. Why? I actually knew about this one. Why? Because I don't remember where I saw it, but I saw it somewhere and I thought it was really funny. Well, I've heard that this person is now officially shadow banned from all Universal theme Lame. parks. <laughs> but if you haven't seen the video, this person ducks under like the the queue wait there's a video yeah i haven't seen the video i just saw the article the person ducks under the queue lines gets up in front of the ball the the bald goblin's head he pets it a couple times and he just goes bonk and he slaps him right on the ball of it and it's hilarious but why why those things are so expensive and so hard to make and they're so like finicky and they'll break and well i'd say i'd say do it for the vine but, but vine is dead it's tiktok now so do it for the tiktok i well, guess well i guess if you never want to go back to universal stop a goblin but i am not encouraging that please don't ban me Universal. i think it's ridiculous i think it's really funny <laughs> now story story number two there was a brief fire at the closed Popeye and Ludo's build wrap barges at Universal's Islands of Adventure. So, um, this area of the park is currently closed for construction and refurbishment. Um, so this fire was construction related. So the, the ride is fine. Is um, this in Florida or California? It's in Florida. Okay. Um, 
It was towards the back half of the attraction and was called by an caused by an overfilled fuel tank. It was put out super quickly. Um, people wouldn't have known about it unless they didn't see the smoke. So the smoke went over the construction walls and people saw it in the distance. They were like, uh-oh, <laughs> something's wrong because Universal has a history of lots of really, really terrible fires. Interesting. Uh, like, I'm talking like, I don't know if you've heard about the one fire where like one of their archives of a bunch of old music burned now and they lost a whole oh, lot of original. I do know about that. Yes. They lost a whole lot of original records and stuff. Um, and also, I think the original attraction with King Kong in it, uh, Confrontation, I'm pretty sure, uh, burned to the ground and they completely lost that ride. Dude, if they have such bad luck with fires, why do they have a fire-breathing dragon in Diagon Alley? <laughs> I don't know, but I, um, and also another water ride at Universal caught on fire. Um, how do water rides, that's what I said, how do water rides what? catch on fire? You'd have, I have to show you the video or I'll put, post, post a picture of some of the different like fire, I wouldn't say highlights, but the different like the moments. fire in, highlights. <laughs> the moments in history of all the universal fires that I can remember. There mm-hmm. have been quite a few, like more than you'd think um, and like more like prominent ones than you'd think. Huh. Um, so my, my last three stories uh, are around Disney, but my first one's actually from Hong Kong Disneyland. Um, as of this episode being posted on february 19th hong kong disneyland will be officially reopened which is great it's been closed for a really long time um all of the other parks except for florida have been um on and off closing and opening because Uh of COVID. and hopefully this is their permanent reopening uh for the rest of their season for as long as hong kong disneyland exists um so yay that's great and i'm excited to see opening day pictures and hopefully new merchandise and things like that um now my next two stories are both refurbishment stories from walt disney world so the moat around cinderella castle is being drained and scrims are up around the castle nobody knows what refurbishment's coming it's interesting. The castle just went through a mega overhaul, like the rose gold like castle, like it's pink now and all that. Mm-hmm. And now there are scrims going up and the moat is slowly being dra- drained. There are little dams up to block the water and like people can tell the water level is just slowly going down. So we don't know what's happening around theory. there. Theory. theory. What's your theory? theory? They are going to fill the moat with jello. Oh. And they're going to make uh, the castle jello themed. Jello themed. Yeah, kind I mean, of like the castle in Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. That's that's what I'm thinking. I mean, the 50th anniversary is coming up in October, so who knows what they're going to do. Jello. The plan was for the pink castle, but maybe it's going to be a jello castle. I yeah. <laughs> and then another something being drained story. That's weird. Things are getting drained. More this jello. Week. But um In Epcot, future world waterways are also being drained around the Seven Seas Pavilion. And some theories are that this is potentially for the Journey of Water, which we heard is coming to Epcot. Um, The Journey of Water is going to be replacing um, the Innovations area, and I think the Seas. And it's uh, it's going to be a walkthrough garden attraction inspired by Moana. It's a very interesting concept. Um, Yeah. So yeah. hopefully they're going to get started on construction for that. Um, and aside from from Journey of Water, just Epcot in general, they're making a lot of progress on the innovations uh, demolition right now. I think the roof on one of the buildings is almost completely removed and soon that stuff will be gone, which is sad. But I'm excited to see the new things that they're bringing to Epcot. And hopefully we get to see Journey of Water soon. And Space 220, which we've been waiting for since 2019. Okay. <laughs> So that's all my stories I have. Space 220? Is yes. that okay? Just it's going to be sure a new restaurant. Oh. You're going to get in the restaurant and you're going to feel like you're being taken up in a space elevator. And when you're up there, you sit in the restaurant. It's not actually high up, it's a simulation. And then once you're in the restaurant, you look out the windows and you're on a space station. No, okay. Okay, I thought it was going to be something else. Because when you started talking about it, it was like a space kind of retro. What I was thinking, okay, so I never once in my life has it <laughs> crossed my mind that I ever wanted to go to space. Same. Because just like, just like, ah, oh, it just seems so scary to me. I hate the idea of space. So what I thought you were going to say is that like, 
like somehow <laughs> you have to like sit back in the scene and it launches you in the space. You would absolutely hate mission space. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> she just banged her head on my bed. No, that would be terrifying. Ew. Yeah, you'd hate mission space for sure. Okay, that's all the stories I have. <laughs> oh my god. I'm just anxious. Ah. Okay. <laughs> Cool. That was Walt Lily World. Ding. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Time. Every time we pause, you say cool. 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 Well, uh, I will, for the rest of the podcast, I will try and not say cool ever again. <laughs> oh, no. That is my goal of the day. All right. So let's get started with repeat of the week. Ding. <laughs> so, Evil Love Holiday, yes. or Valentine's Day, as m- the majority of the population calls it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so we tried to pick more, like, love-related songs. Right. And I struggled with this, and once you hear my repeat of the week, you'll understand. <laughs> I... Kind, I mean, I get it is classified as a love song, right? So, yeah, it's another Taylor Swift song. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the song that I chose is Peace by Taylor Swift from her folklore album. Mm-hmm. Uh, this actually has been stuck in my head recently, so yeah, I was gonna do a different song, but I was like, nah, so. We're doing this one. Um, So here are my standout lyrics. Um, And it's just around the corner, darling, because it lives in me. No, I can never give you peace. Um, All these people think love's for show, but I would die for you in secret. Mm. Is it enough? I'd give you my sunshine, give you my best, but the rain is going to is always going to come if you're standing with me. So basically there's a few different interpretations of this song. Um, in Taylor Swift's Long Pond, is it Long Pond? Yeah. What, what her Disney plus thing. Mm, um, she talks about, she talks about this song with Aaron Dessner who wrote like, like the instrumental part to mm-hmm. the song for it and how they both have different interpretations of the same song. So basically this song is her love song to Joe, her boyfriend or mm-hmm. rumored fiance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and to kind of like her family and friends where from her point of view, it's like, you know, and it's just around the corner, dark. Like, she can't give anybody in her life peace because of how famous she is. And, like, she can't help that there's going to be a paparazzi, like, down the street. Like, yeah. she's basically like, will, I will give you everything I possibly can control. Will it be enough if I can't give you peace, though? That's really interesting. Yeah. Wow. So, Aaron Dessner, when he's like, you know, I love this and... This is not a direct quote. It's been a while since I've watched it. Um, he's basically like, yeah, I have a different interpretation of this same song where he talks about his struggle with depression and anxiety and all these things and how, you know, these things are always going to be looming in his life. Oh, okay. And he can't really control it. Yeah. So is it enough that he can't give peace because of these Because of the mental illnesses that he has. Interesting. Which is my favorite interpretation of it. So, like, um, one of the, one of the lyrics I have is, is it enough? Well, before that, before she says, is it enough? She talks about, like, all these things that she will do or give him. Like, um, I will sit in the trenches for you. I'll swing for the fences with you. Mm -hmm. Like, I will give you my wild. I will give you my child. Like, I will give you everything, but is it enough if I can't give you peace? That's really cool. Yeah. Whoa. So I I love this song. Yeah. Hmm. I think that's all I have. Okay. Well, I don't have a repeat of the week. I tried so hard to come up with something, but I did not have music in my head at all this week, which is really unusual. I always have a song in my head, but 
I've either just been because I'm stuck inside and I have no inspiration <laughs> for music or I'm just like tired and my brain's sleepy and my brain doesn't want to think about anything else but homework. I don't have one. So I would like suggestions for songs that I should listen to today to actually have a song in my head this week. Um, and if I can come up with something by the end of the day, I'll have Julia put uh, my own repeat of the week on <laughs> Spotify when she does that. So, yeah. Yes. Um, we do have a Spotify playlist yes, yes. with all of our repeats of the week. I think it's just called Repeat of the Week by Julia Durham. Yeah, something like that. I yeah, don't know. She just it. look it up. If you look it up on Spotify, our picture will be up there. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to attach a link on Instagram and it wasn't working. Oh, okay. okay. Instagram's being stupid right now. So. Yeah. But go follow our Instagram. Yay! Yes, yes please. <laughs> uh, we have lots of updates and things yeah. on there. So that was repeat of the week. Ding! Ding. <laughs> All right. Our next segment, <laughs> segment is waving through a musical window. Ding. Ding! That was so sad. Are you okay? <laughs> My nose itches. <laughs> okay. Um, so your turn this week. What'd you pick? Yes, yes, yes. I did Wicked. Ooh. Yep. yep. Alright, <laughs> here's a synopsis, synopsis, synopsis from Wicked. Winner of three 2004 Tony Awards, <laughs> Wicked is a Broadway phenomenon that looks at what happens happen in the land of Oz, but from a different angle. With a thrilling score that includes hits such as Defying Gravity, Popular, and For Good, Wicked transfixes audiences with its wildly inventive story and opulent physical production. Opulent. I'm, I'm glad I knew how to pronounce that. This is the first time I'm reading this. Mm-hmm. Long before Dorothy arrives in Oz, there is another young woman born with emerald green skin, smart fiery, misunderstood, and possessing an extraordinary talent. Hmm. When she meets a bubbly blonde who is exceptionally popular... (laughs) I see what they did there. Their initial rivalry turns into the unlikeliness of friendships until the world decides to call one good and the other wicked. Oh... Interesting. And that was from Playbill.com for all your theater needs. <laughs> Have to get that plug in there. Yes. All right. All so, right. Wicked. Wicked. I love Wicked. Yeah. Wicked, I think, was the first, like, professional production I ever saw. Interesting. Um, I don't... I can't remember, to be honest. I saw it in sixth grade. Okay. I also think I saw it in middle school or early high school. One of the two. Um... I saw it with my mom. This was before we had our season tickets. <laughs> oh, I saw it with my dad. Oh, yeah. That's nice. It was a good time. I liked it. I think it was a really good show. I remember um, being on the playground in middle school and we'd play Wicked outside before we had any idea what the story was and what was happening. <laughs> that's what we would do. Like on the hippo. Good old Oh days. my god. I hate that I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Because <laughs> I only went to that school for two years. The hippo. That's where we play wicked. I was never cool enough to be in the hippo. Really? Nobody would ever let me in. We claimed mm-hmm. the hippo. The hippo was our place until no, in f- the hippo was stolen. Well, in first and second grade, I only went to the school in first and second grade. Mm-hmm. But like, I was not allowed in the hippo. Like, oh. a be- nobody would let me in because I wasn't cool enough. That's so so I usually spent my days on the seesaw. <laughs> seesaw yeah because nobody else was on it exactly that's why i said the seesaw <laughs> nobody liked me in elementary so school <laughs> we were talking about wicked all right wicked <laughs> i love wicked um i don't i i don't know the show has a special place in my heart along with the phantom mm-hmm. of the opera because the phantom of the opera was like the first thing that like got me into musical theater yeah. but this was the first like lo- 
as far as I remember, this is the first like live production, professional production of a show I've ever seen. If not the first, I'm sure it was one of them. I'd seen the Nutcracker several times before this, but I think this might have been the first like musical I saw. Yeah, I, can't, I, can't I, I don't remember at all. <laughs> I don't remember anything before Wicked. All right. So, what are your favorite songs? For okay, Wicked? my favorite songs are "As Long as You're Mine," oh. the duet between Elphaba and Fiero. Okay love that song interesting so much and there's this really good uh, i would there's this really good version of the song out mm-hmm. there where um this brother sister duo from broadway i wish i remembered who it was but they're doing like a cabaret show in oh. um new york city and the pianist starts playing this song and they're like no 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 and it's really <laughs> awkward and funny <laughs> but that's, that's one of my favorite performances of the song but yeah. i love the song i also love defying gravity because of duh course. yes and um i love what is this feeling because that gets stuck in my head literally <laughs> every day so i feel that the, the song radiates like our friendship <laughs> I love it. oh my god <laughs> my favorite songs i have popular because that was one of the only songs i had on my ipad uh, not ipad my ipod uh-huh. and i would listen to it all the time the only song i had on my ipod was defying gravity oh my gosh which is I why popular. i know it which... <gasps> <laughs> i <laughs> keep going keep going <laughs> um i also have uh, defying gravity on my list because again Duh. Duh. And I have What Is This Feeling as well. Oh my god. <laughs> so I have two out of three in the same No, song. I love the Alphabet Fiero dynamic, mm-hmm. like, so much. I love the, um, the haters to lovers storyline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that kind of storyline. <laughs> yes. I don't know why. <laughs> don't judge me. I love it. Um, <laughs> I haven't heard it worded like that. Haters bank off. Anyway, um... All right, if I could play a role, I would want to be Elphaba. Um, I feel like, uh, here's my thing. Here's what I was thinking about today. So I've always, like, identified with Elphaba. Mm-hmm. Like, just because, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, she's just like me. We're so, <laughs> we're the outcasts. We're so cool. Um, and, like, I can actually sing her role. But right. then today I was thinking about it, and I was like, well, if we're going by not me, but my casting type, my mm-hmm. casting type is Glinda. Is it? Oh. But I can't sing her role. Okay. Because Glinda is the like the comedic relief. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huh. That's what I was thinking about today. But like, no, I am hardcore Elphaba vibes. Okay. Well, my role is Glinda. Yeah. Just yeah. Duh. <laughs> duh. Pink. <laughs> uh, bubbly. Like glittery persona that is glinda um i would quite like to play her yeah yeah i think that the you alpha me glinda vibes is like kind of our whole podcast in general is that just like Mm -hmm. what we are yeah yeah so that's interesting okay so what are your thoughts about the show in general um i love it it's good Mm mm-hmm yeah. Um, the only thing I have written down in this that I haven't gone over already is that I vividly remember the green baby. And that's like... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't remember too much of it because I saw it such a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And I, I see some of the costumes in my head and some of the scenes and I remember like certain parts of it. But the green baby is the only thing I have a clear image of in my head from the entire show. <laughs> yeah. And even, like, I watched a, a recording of it mm-hmm. um, a few, a couple years ago. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> um, but I watched a recording of it, and I don't... It was really good. I love this musical. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it since... I um since I saw it back then, so I guess I need to watch yeah. a slime tutorial of Wicked. I have a bunch of them saved, so oh heck yeah. <laughs> so I think the one that I watched was with Adina and Kristen in it. Oh. I think all that's right. the one that I watched. I think that's all I've got. Is that all you have? Um, possibly. I don't know. I mean. I don't know what to say about the show besides like it's really good. The story hey. is interesting. I'm 
reading the book right now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I haven't gotten too far into it because Mm -hmm. I, for some reason, I can't pick up books at this very moment. Right. I'm pretty sure my mom has the book with all of her Twilight books sitting in the corner. (laughs) Um. (laughs) I want that shirt. The shirt. The shirt. Oh, (laughs) the shirt. Yes. Okay. It would never fit me. I just want (laughs) to... Oh, man. Okay. Um, yeah, Wicked is really good. It's, like, one of the most well-known musicals out there. Like, usually when I'm, like, hey, you like Broadway? Yeah, 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 I love Broadway. Like, oh, what's your favorite show? It's usually, like, either Hamilton, Hamilton or, or Wicked. Wicked. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Adina Menzel is wonderful in it, you know, before mm-hmm. she destroyed her vocal cords. Oh, uh, singing she was, go. <laughs> <laughs> she was wonderful. Yeah. Um... And Kristen Chenoweth is always amazing. I mean, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Kevin Chamberlain. Do you know who Kevin Chamberlain is? I don't know. He played Bertram. Oh my Jesse. gosh, never mind. Yes, I do. <laughs> he played He played a character in Wicked on really? Broadway for a while. Who was it? It might have been the wizard. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he played the wizard on Broadway for a while. Uh, don't wow. quote me on this. I may or may not be getting this wrong, but I'm pretty sure I remember huh. seeing that somewhere because hey, I, love, I love I love Kevin wild. Chamberlain. <laughs> He's his, so funny. The, his best role, aside from Bertram, is Gusto and Ratatouille, the TikTok musical. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wait, when are we talking about that? Well, because I haven't seen it, so. Oh my gosh, wait. Okay, Ratatouille, the TikTok musical coming soon, maybe after Love Never Dies? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh yeah so this wasn't really valentine's day themed because yeah. honestly i had kind of picked this out like a while ago mm-hmm. and then i was like oh we're doing like a s- s- kind of sort of valentine's day right. theme which like you can't tell that we're <laughs> even doing this but um later on you'll be able to tell but yeah not currently. um no but i think that I should have done the last five years. Mm-hmm. And I should have made you watch the last five years. Yeah. <gasps> Sorry, I just got such a good idea. No spoilers. All right. So <laughs> I think that's all we have for Waving Through a Musical Window. Ding. Um, yeah. 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 It's really good. 10 it's out of really 10 good. recommend. You should check it out. Watch a slant tutorial. <laughs> watch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, we're going to take a break Mm -hmm. and hear from any sponsors, if we have any. And then we'll be back with our movie review. Thank you, sponsors. (laughs) Yes, thank you. If you were there. All right, so let us talk about our movie of the week. Yes, ding. (laughs) Ding. All right, we watched Nerdy Dancing. Yeah. Because it is tied for my favorite movie of all time. Tied now? Yeah, it's always been tied. Okay. It's tied with Baby Driver. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. Two completely different movies (laughs) are tied for my top pick of favorite movie but i love this movie a lot um yeah i would watch it every day if i really wanted to and i think i have before so So that was my second time watching it but Mm -hmm. obviously you've seen it like four billion jillion times yes um and after we watched the movie we watched um a little special on like behind the scenes stuff it's on netflix um, the the movies that the movie made us, made us yeah. they did an episode on Dirty Dancing. Yeah, so we got some behind the scenes looks into the making of the movie, and it was really interesting to see some of the stuff after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I recommend that if you're really into movies to go and check that out. They only have four episodes, and then they have a spinoff of that called the Christmas movies that made up, where, oh. where they talk about Elf and <gasps> yes. uh. What's the Disney one? The Disney one. The Tim Burton one. Nightmare Before Christmas? Yeah, yeah. They have one about that. So they have those two. They have Dirty Dancing. They have Home Alone. They have 
Die Hard, and they have Ghostbusters. I thought the Ghostbusters one was really interesting, but we're getting off topic. So here is a synopsis. I don't remember where I got this. It's from somewhere on Google. Cool. Probably Wikipedia. Yeah. (laughs) Baby, played by Jennifer Grey, is one listless summer away from the Peace Corps. Hoping to enjoy her youth while it lasts, she's disappointed when her summer plans deposit her at a sleepy resort in the Catskills with her parents. Her luck turns around, however, when the resort's dance instructor, Johnny, Patrick Swayze, (laughs) enlists Baby as his new partner, and the two fall in love. Baby's father forbids her from seeing Johnny, but she's determined to help him perform the last big dance of the summer. Interesting. Oh, I love it. (laughs) It was a really good movie. I don't... I'm not one for romance movies, but I love this movie (laughs) so much. Okay. All right. So the opening song... I have a lot of things about this soundtrack. My my first note was this movie has great music. It so does. We're already off to a good this, start. I listen to this soundtrack all the time. <laughs> like it is just so good. And even when they were talking about it on the movies that made us, like they're yeah, everything is picked the, for a reason. Oh yes, like the writer of the the writers of the script like specifically picked the majority of this music. Mm-hmm. Like and. They had a very small budget for this movie, and they got it. Yeah. Which was awesome. So the opening song is Be My Baby by the Renettes, and I love this song <laughs> so much. It gets stuck in my head all the time. Um, so then we start with Baby and her family driving to the place that they're going to for the summer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and this movie starts with a voiceover but the voiceover no- never comes never back. comes back, and I've always thought that was weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I noticed that too. Um, so I don't have very many notes on this opening scene. It's just kind of mm-hmm. your typical like your your road trip before something goes goes on like scene at the beginning of a movie. Yeah, so. she's like inter- She's like, I'm baby, and this you're watching Disney Channel. This is my dad. My dad. I never thought I would find somebody as great as my dad. Yeah. So she's giving the introduction to the movie. Yeah. Um. The next thing I have written down, they get there, and there's a lot of noticeable faces in here, like in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um. I didn't write any of them down. I so meant to write the actors down. <laughs> so now I'm just going to name off some of the people that I recognize. Okay. <laughs> um, the mom also plays Emily Gilmore and Gilmore Girls. Hmm. Um, the guy who gives her the chicken, you know who oh, I'm talking about? Yes. He's in Seinfeld. Okay. What his name is, is not coming to mind. What his character name? Not coming to mind at all. Cool. Um, Jennifer Grey, obviously, who plays Baby, was also in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is what I recognize her from because I love that movie. Um, yeah, I so meant to write all these things down and I didn't. So <laughs> That's all right. check it out. There's a lot of noticeable faces in this movie. Okay. So, um, so they get there. Yes, they get there. And what do they do first? They, I don't even remember. Oh, well, they go to the pavilion and they have a short little dance lesson. Oh, oh my very, God. I forgot about that. Yeah. Um. So it's their very first activity that they do. It's like a bunch of other families there. It's like a, like a big coordinated like dance group. Um, yeah. And my favorite line in the whole movie happens in the scene. And it is, <laughs> God didn't give you maracas if he didn't want you to shake them. So, um... <laughs> Obviously, this referring to she wants all of the the ladies to 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 dance. <laughs> That's yeah. So I love that part. I yeah, think it's hilarious. That line is said by Penny, who yes. is we will be talking about her later. Mm-hmm. Um, the next thing that I have is when she is like going down. When she's like, oh, I'm going down to the main house. I'll be back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I have something for right after this. Um, I've had the time of my life underscore is playing under it. Mm-hmm. And I love it. It's like very subtle. It's 
it's so nice and it's like oh we're gearing up for the big moment <laughs> yeah um and this isn't one of the notes that i have written down but they just they're so quick to let their youngest daughter just leave yeah and then like at night time no, i think She's their oldest daughter. Okay, we don't know anybody's age in this movie. And I have that written down. Like, really? how old is Patrick Swayze? How oh, old yeah, is Baby? He looks a lot older than her. How old is What's-Her-Face, the sister? Oh, Lisa? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Um, Because, like, I think that L- Lisa's the baby but you'd think it'd be baby because they I call know. her well, baby i have that written down too is why do they call her baby yeah they, they never, never explain, explain it. it and she just allows this to happen yeah and these strangers <laughs> who she's never met call her they baby call her anyway baby because her parents call her baby yeah it's interesting <laughs> like you don't find out her name until, until like three-fourths yeah. of the way into the movie it's really yeah, I thought that was strange. Like, why? Why is that her name? I don't know. I mean, we know why it's her name. Like, because in the in the documentary, like it explains, like, oh yeah, this is this was my nickname as a kid. Yeah, but they but... don't explain why it's Baby's nickname. You know? Yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. Oh, well. Anyway, so she goes down to the main house. Yes. And the is this like the director of the place yes. or something? Max is this, like this is my line. Uh, I have Max is, Max telling the wait staff to court the daughters and then berating the lower class workers is gross. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Max is the head of this this resort and he's telling all the the young men that he has employed um to go court all of the daughters of all of the rich patrons. Show them all a real good time. <laughs> Ew, yes. <laughs> gross. Yes. Um, oh, and this is when we get our first look at Swayze. Saunters in with his sunglasses mm, on indoors. mm. (laughs) I love and it's nighttime. It is nighttime. That's just how amazing. That's just how cool he is. (laughs) You said cool. Crap! (laughs) No. I've been waiting. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Um, well, I love Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> a lot of my notes are just, mm, look at Swayze. <laughs> I have a lot of my notes saying that, wow, he's very sweaty. He's but... sweaty Swayze, as we call him. <laughs> I made my boyfriend watch this movie with me one time, and we refer to him as sweaty Swayze yeah. a lot. So, like, if either of us are, like, like sweating, we're, like, ah, uh, we're sweaty like Swayze. <laughs> um... Oh man, I love Patrick Swayze. <laughs> next. <laughs> uh, what do you have next? Uh, my next note is the choreography is so good. So this is after oh God, she yeah. she stops snooping on what's going on in there, and she she runs into her little friend, and he's carrying some watermelons. No, we have before this. Okay, you have something else. Yeah, because there's like a whole dance sequence before this next dance sequence. Oh, yeah, duh. In the ballroom. The ballroom. Because my next part. note yes. is, okay, so they're, like, they went to dinner, I think. Yeah, they did. Why did I write this down? They went to dinner, and um, one of the waiters, Robbie the Creep, yes, Robbie is the like, creep. hey, Lisa, I'll see you later. And she's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, why does she find Robbie attractive? Yeah, I don't like Robbie. Robbie He's creepy. Robbie from the very beginning puts off like creep vibes, yeah. which it, like will be explained later in the movie. But like, I don't like him. So they're at this place, and Penny and Johnny come in, and they they're doing a little dance number in the middle of the oh, floor around all the so patrons. So good. And it's really really great, and all of the patrons are loving it. The oh old my people God, are yeah. clapping, like everyone's smiling and getting into it. And but then Max, he looks at them like they're doing something wrong, but they're they're entertaining his patrons. Uh, yeah, which is what because I didn't well, and Baby is dancing with Max's nephew, I think. Oh, okay. Who yeah. is going to hotel management business school or yes. something to take over his uncle? I think it's. Yeah, I think that's their relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, to take over the business when he's done with it. And, oh, this is our first glimpse of the conductor in this movie. And I love him so much. And oh, he only yes. shows up twice. Yes, he's a really funny character. <laughs> he's my favorite side character. And he only shows up twice. <laughs> and I love him. Um, so, yeah, yeah. I, I find it really interesting that, like, he's upset that they're doing something that yeah. his, like that the patrons well, are enjoying. And the nephew says, oh, well, well, this isn't going to sell dance lessons. And I'm like, 
but it's I I would yeah buy dance lessons like I would I would be like I want to dance like that yeah. okay so now is the the scene that I was talking about so they so baby ends up outside and she's walking around and she runs into the nephew guy no she runs into Johnny's cousin John oh they're yes. two different people yes yes I confuse them a lot too but they're two different people okay so not the nephew guy the uh so Johnny's, Johnny's cousin, cousin and he has like some really abnormally shaped watermelons. Yes. They are long. <laughs> yes. It's interesting. They are I've never seen a watermelon giants. like that before. Well, um, she for some reason she walks over to this guy she doesn't really know and she's like, Hey, I'll carry some of your abnormal watermelons up to this house that I've never been before. Yeah. And he's like, Okay. And he's like, Okay, but you can't tell anybody yeah. or else we're all gonna get fired. And they go up to the employees only clubhouse and everybody's dirty dancing (laughs) um Um, and this is when i have written the choreography is so good it is they are awesome it's so this entire movie's choreography is so good Mm -hmm. um i wish i could dance mood (laughs) i wish i could dance i wish i was in this movie yeah i oh man yeah. So um, then Swayze and Penny come in. Yeah, and I, like, this is when I have written Johnny is so sweaty, like Johnny right off the bat. S- sweaty Swayze. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I love that the choreography and the cinematography and his outfit all accentuates his hips. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Just wow. I have stop pangirling. So I, I love it <laughs> so um, much. So baby's hanging out in the corner with um Johnny's cousin and mm-hmm. Johnny comes over to speak with him and he's like, Who's this girl? Why is she here? Yeah. I, I carried, carried a, a watermelon. watermelon. <laughs> Besides the line nobody puts baby in a corner, that's the second most famous line from yes. this movie. I carried a watermelon. I carried a watermelon. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was my next note. Is that that line is absolutely hilarious? Yeah. So Johnny, he goes, he he takes baby onto the the dance floor a little bit later, and he tries to teach her how to dirty dance. Yes, and, and she's, she's so, so awkward. Stiff. She's so stiff and awkward. Yeah, and I'm just like me eventually (laughs) she starts getting a little into it but then johnny goes off to find a new partner and dance with someone else and she's left there dancing all by herself (laughs) and i have she she like claps after the song's over and her little funny funky little clap dance (laughs) is so (laughs) awkward and strange (laughs) baby is me i am baby it was so (laughs) funny yeah oh i love that part Mm -hmm. so then the next scene is they're trying on wigs. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of strange activities at this resort uh, and that yeah, don't make really sense. And it's, I think it's the two same, like, the same two wigs just, like, over and over. Like, yeah. I think, I think I heard, like, an announcer in the back room say something about, like, a Cleopatra wig or something like that. And that's what they were trying oh, on. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone's trying on wigs. And um. after... Everyone leaves the scene except for Baby and yeah, Penny. Baby, they have a really awkward interaction. Baby goes over to Penny, who's, like, helping out with the event. And she's, like, complimenting her. And she's like, oh, I heard you were a rocket. And that's so cool. I wish I could dance like you. Like, blah, blah, blah. Just complimenting her. And Penny is like, Penny is like, yeah, well, it's all I had after my mom kicked me out. And, like, and goes, like, really leaves. TMI about it. And I'm like, oh, it's interesting. Okay. Our first encounters with Penny are not very nice. But, and we, we understand later in the story she's dealing with a lot. But oh. still. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I don't have very much um, very much written down until um, they're, they're all meeting together and Baby's talking to Penny, like, in that, like, warehouse area. Oh, yeah. So there's, like, a dance at the pavilion. Yes. And they're wondering where Penny is. Penny is nowhere to be found. Yeah. Uh, baby is with the hotel management's nephew, and he says, "He he's a, <laughs> he says, I love watching your hair blow in the breeze, but her hair isn't even blowing." In the <laughs> And then Robbie tries to make a move on Lisa, Mm -hmm. and they're still trying to find Penny. So 
they go to the kitchen. Um, the nephew and baby go to the kitchen, and yeah. baby sees Penny crying in the corner of yeah. the kitchen. Um, yeah, when I first saw this, like the shot makes it look like she's naked in it the does. kitchen, yeah, which is really weird. She's not. At first, it also made it look like she was dead in the corner. Oh. Yeah, it's she's not naked. She's wearing clothes, but like how it's set up and how she's sitting makes her look very naked. (laughs) Um, so baby sees this and she goes to go get her uh, Johnny's cousin, who is her new friend. Yeah, and Johnny comes along and they go to the kitchen and uh, they help Penny out. And yeah. they go to uh, they go to Penny's room to like warm her up. She's got blanket. She's got like coffee or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, Penny got knocked up by Robbie the creep. Yes, and um, Baby is concerned about this obviously, and she's trying to help Penny and like provide her some kind of comfort. Mm-hmm. And there's this really great line from Penny that's "Go back to your playpen, baby." <laughs> I like that line. I don't know. She, as soon as she said it, I was like, hmm. Yeah. That's good. I, I don't know. Pen, baby just wants to help. And that's kind of like her whole persona. Yeah. She's it, a really nice She girl. just wants to help everybody. Yeah. So, obviously, she wants to help Penny in her situation. Mm-hmm. So, because Baby wants to help out, she ends up going to her dad. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, trigger warning. I meant to say this at the beginning. But mm. this movie does deal with topics about... Um, abortion. Mm-hmm. Just a trigger warning to put that out there. We will be lightly talking about that. Not our opinions, but movie-wise, we're going to be talking about that. Yeah. So, just putting that out there. I'm sorry I didn't put it at the beginning. That's my bad. Um. So, yeah. So, Penny thinks that her only option, because she needs this job, is to have an illegal abortion. Mm-hmm. Um, but she doesn't have enough money. So yeah. Baby, because she wants the help, she goes to her dad. Who she knows has the money. And she asks him. Yes. Yeah, she's like, can I have this money? And he's like, you're not in any trouble, are you, baby? And she's like, no. It's and not illegal, is it? It's not illegal, is it? And she's like, no, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have written about this. Her dad is so chill about lending her that much money. I think it's $250. Yeah. Which back in the day was a lot. Yeah. You know? This movie takes place in the 60s. Yeah. So, and he's just so fine with giving his daughter, like, this money. Yeah. And she's been out all day and, like, she doesn't ever, like, she, she doesn't do the vacation, like, activities with her family. She's always hanging out with these people who, uh-huh. yeah. Yeah, so I, I thought that was interesting. Uh, and Baby uses, like, puppy dog eyes when she's, like, asking her dad for the money. She's mm-hmm. like, no, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought that was funny. Um, so she ends up going back up to the clubhouse later that night. Mm-hmm. I think. We don't know the timeline of this movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, the entire timeline takes place within, like, three weeks. Yeah, it's the course of a summer, so. Yeah. So... She goes up there and she's like, I got you the money, Penny. And Penny's like, I don't want your money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and she, she basically, she's refusing because her um, and Johnny, they have a dance competition coming up. It's like their last like performance like of their season. And it's like a big deal for them. Um, and they're well, going to... they have a they have a performance at another hotel. Yes, yeah, and it's it's like a big deal for them, and they can't miss it. Um, because yeah. uh, if they don't do this, they won't get their yeah. Pay and the only time the, the only time the doctor the doctor could see Penny is that day during yeah. that time. So what they decide to do, um, against Johnny's will, really is against that... Johnny and Baby's will. Yeah. <laughs> Um, baby will be a stand-in for Penny for, um, so she can go to the appointment. So the next we have a a dance dance montage montage. to wipe out. Mm -hmm. And I wrote, I love this part. And then (laughs) she goes through several costume changes throughout, um, the dance montage because this Uh is taking place over quite a, quite a long time. And I wrote, she is feeling herself in that coral tank top. Oh my God. Yes. (laughs) I love that part. She's like, she's into her dancing. It's yeah. Great. And then and right after, we have like a tiny break in the montage where yeah. he's like, 
Brit is like dancing is like your heartbeat. Dun, 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 dun. And I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> and then we go into another dance montage yes. with the song Hungry Eyes, which I love that song. She has this really cute like pink outfit at one point. It's only shown once. And it's like a pink like crop top and like shorts and like pink polka dot. And it's so cute. Yeah. Um yeah, we get some shots of shirtless Swayze. <laughs> in this of course you have that written down it's Um. important (laughs) (laughs) um and then they end up in a lake at one point oh Uh, yeah tree their baby is upset because Swayze his name is Johnny but I just refer to him as Swayze (laughs) (laughs) Swayze won't show her how to do the The lift lift. which is like the most important part of the dance Mm -hmm. and he's so he they go oh, yes, yes, driving yes. so they they go out to his car he's already upset um and he he realizes that he's locked his keys in the car mm-hmm. and he doesn't decide to go call a locksmith or ask anyone for help he picks up a pole and he smashes the window to his car and, and the very next shot as they're driving to this tree and lake is him and you can see the car window behind his head and there is no hole in that window but then in the next shot it's back yeah it's interesting. <laughs> um, so there's the disappearing hole. Um, and then they go to this lake and they're balancing on a log over a little creek and they're dancing yeah. on the log and having fun. Yeah. And he's trying to, to teach lake. her about balance on the log, which um, in the documentary thing, yes, yes. they talk about how Patrick fell off of Patrick had chronic knee pain. Like, mm-hmm during this entire thing because in high school he played football and it like destroyed his knees Mm -hmm. um and so he fell off of the log during filming onto his knee yeah (laughs) and that really messed up for the rest of shooting oh yeah but he still went all out on everything Mm -hmm. and we'll get to that a little bit later when Mm -hmm. we talk about the final dance but Yeah, that's a little bit of an interesting tidbit right there. Um, So then they're trying to do the lifts in the field, but it's not really working out. So then they go to this lake, Mm -hmm. and this is a really famous scene where they were doing lifts in the lake. Yeah. Um, I remember, I I think about this scene a lot because um, when I, like, binged watch this movie, like, a lot when I had mono last year. Mm Mm-hmm. Because when I was in Florida, it was the only thing on TV, and it was shown on repeat the entire week I was there. Oh, nice. And so I watched it at least three times every day while I was there because I was just so exhausted, yeah. and I, I couldn't get out of bed that this is what I watched. <laughs> I loved it every time. But when I was watching it, they cut the scene out of the movie. The TV version? Yeah. Interesting. Which is weird. Like, they cut, like, the part where... You know, they do the devil's tango, but which makes sense, which makes sense. But they cut the lake scene out. Oh, no. oh man, I've never heard anyone say that before. That was so funny. There's a YouTuber that says it all the time. And so now every time I think about that, I think of him. So <laughs> um, so after we we have this, what comes next? Oh, um, Penny is about to help Baby get ready for their yes. performance, yeah, yeah. and on their way to, like, the locker rooms or the bathrooms or wherever they are, um, this old woman drops her purse, and a mm. bunch of wallets spill out. Yeah. And they just... They, they, they just help over. her. They help her put everything back her in out. her purse. This comes back into play later, but it makes me so angry that they weren't like, hey, why do you have, like, 15 wallets in your purse? Yeah. Um, so, then... Penny gets baby ready, gets her in her dress, has her makeup all done up, um, and they have a really nice, like, sweet moment. In oh, the yeah. Room. They talk about, like, Penny's like, I want you to know that I'm not, like, what you think I am. Like, Robbie told me I was different and all these things. And I'm like, honey, it's okay. We, we all been there. <laughs> not in your exact situation, but, you know, we all been there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, was a boy told me I was a star. <laughs> Bruh, if anybody knows that song, <laughs> let me know. Um, Madison will know what that song is. So we but. we have that cute little scene, and then it's time for their performance that they've been working towards. And it doesn't go off terribly. It's not bad. No, it doesn't. But she misses the lift. She He's like, 
he's like kind of whispering to her as they're doing the dance to like keep yes. her on track. Um, but she he's like, Are you ready for the lift? And I'm just like they never successfully landed the lift. Why yeah. would they even still think about including it? Right. She doesn't do the lift. She hesitates and she does a silly little dance yeah. uh, instead. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, and so the next thing is that they're driving back to the resort and mm. baby's changing in the back seat. Swayze is peeking through the mirror. I saw. I never noticed that before. <laughs> I but Swayze, what are you doing? And then I wrote, um, how old are they? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so... And, oh, Swayze does this cute smile. Oh, my gosh. Like, Shut near up. the end of the scene. He does this really adorable smile. And I I was thinking about that. And I was like, bro, Shane does the exact same thing. Oh, uh, you're icky. <laughs> no, but, like, okay, Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm going to talk about my boyfriend. But, like, <laughs> um, no. When she gets back in the front seat, he mm-hmm. kind of looks over and does this cute little, like, quirky side smile. Oh. And Shane does the exact yeah. same thing. And I'm just like, whoa. I think I've seen him do that before. Shane is Swayze confirmed. <laughs> just Shane can't dance. Aww. <laughs> Aww. And he's not um, a sweaty. So that's a good thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see. What's next oh okay so they get back to penny's room and mm. the surgery did, did not, not go, go well, well at not all. at all he she's um, in johnny's immense pain oh my god johnny talks about or johnny's cousin talks about he was the one who took her and he's like the doctor had like a what was it he had a fold-out table and oh yeah a uh, dirty knife yeah and, basically yeah and that was it and yeah. it was like really cheap like janky thing. yeah and so he, that he could hear is... her screaming out from like wherever he was yeah but he, he couldn't would... get yeah. to her um so baby's like whoa like this is bad like yeah. this girl's basically she's dying mm-hmm. so she gets her dad who's a doctor by the way mm-hmm. and i wrote we love a man that's prepared because he just has a doctor bag like on Ready. him like he's it's got there. like morphine he's got like a scalpel he's got like everything on him and like everything. we love a man who's prepared <laughs> so he goes up to this house and he takes care of penny and she's totally fine afterwards he does a great job with her um however on his way out of the house he's very upset with baby in particular he's upset well he first of all he thinks that johnny is the one yes. who knocked up who knocked up penny mm-hmm. because johnny is like i take responsibility for penny because yeah. they're childhood friends yeah they're besties and they're dance partners yeah and- yeah. Um, so, but he's mad at Baby because Baby lied to him and she's wearing makeup. And <laughs> Oh, no. But I wrote, her dad is really quick to judge Baby's friends. He didn't even let her begin to explain. So he has oh, yeah. no idea. Like, he cut her well, off. Well, and, and also he's like, this is what you use my money for? Are you freaking kidding right. me? Which, like, that that's justified. But he didn't give her a chance to explain what was going on. Yeah. Um, so he's like, take that makeup off your face before your mother sees you like this. Yeah. (laughs) I think that's really funny. But, um, so he goes back up to the room and goes back to bed. Well, baby's supposed to be going back to her room, but she does not. not. She goes to to Swayze's room. room. (laughs) (laughs) She apologizes on behalf of her dad and he totally brushes that over and he's like, listen, whatever, I deserve it. I am not as high class as you guys. Yeah, so... And it's, like, pretty sad. Yeah. And Johnny... And so, she's, like, there. And um, and Johnny's, like, no, no, no. He's right. I'm nothing. And she says, no, you're everything. And I'm, like, yes, you are. Oh, my God. (laughs) You are everything, Johnny. (laughs) It's a really sweet scene. It is. Um, So, she's, like, dance with me. And, like, this, like, whole scene, like... Okay, dancing is so intimate, and they talk about it in the documentary about, mm-hmm. la- like, just how intimate dancing really is. And I I think it just, like, finally hit me when I watched this movie this last time, when I was like, wow, yeah. dancing is just, like, another form of art to express yourself without using words. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, you're right. Interesting. Yeah, because I don't think Johnny's very good with words, but he's good with dancing. Yeah. And that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I don't remember what the next thing is, but the next thing I wrote down is I love charades. So oh, if you have anything so, before charades. Yeah, that that the next morning is when she reveals her name to him. Or like um well somewhere in there she's like uh, something happens. Oh, they're at breakfast. Mm-hmm. And uh her dad is like we're going to be leaving this afternoon and lisa is like but what about the talent show daddy yeah i'm gonna sing i feel pretty or something else or blah, blah, blah. and so he's like okay fine i guess we can stay and so then uh there's another scene that happens and i don't remember but baby is like baby is like leaving the room and they're like, where are you going? And she's like, I'm going to go play charades in the main house. And they're like, quite the little joiner, are you? Right. But like, flash to the next scene, she just hooked up with Johnny again. Yeah. And <laughs> and I wrote, I love is, charades. So this is the next morning I was talking about. This is when he asked her what her real name is. And she says, Francis. <laughs> her name is Francis. Her name is Francis. It's an interesting name for her, but it kind of works. Um. <sighs> So, the next thing I have written down is after they decide to continue their dance lessons. So, they have an excuse to keep seeing each other. Yeah. Um, so, their dancing. this dance lesson is awesome. It is so... She is such, like, a little flirt. She's like... I, I wrote, when baby takes control of their dance lesson, such a power move. Because oh she's God. just like... He's all like he wants to like give her a hug and like give her a kiss and whatever and she's like oh no like arms spaghetti straight. arms like, <laughs> like this is my dance space this is your dance space. yeah and she's like schooling him on all the things that yeah. he'd get on and the they are for. dancing to uh, love is strange by Mickey yes. and Sylvia yeah. and I love it I love it so much I love how they incorporate the music into the thing they start like lip syncing the music yeah to each it's other. really cute it's so cute mm-hmm. um. So, the next thing I have is um, they're setting up for the talent show. I don't know if it's the auditions or if it's just they're, they're like, making set pieces. I think pieces. they're just setting up for it. Yeah. So, Baby's painting um, a palm tree. And yeah. Lisa is singing. And I wrote, Lisa's song is awful. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Lisa is, she's set up as this, like, precious little, like, rich girl. And, like, uh-huh. she's, like, the... The one in the family who's going to go out and do yeah. great things. Oh, and then she goes over to Baby and she's like, tonight's the night with Robbie. Like, oh, she's yes. decided she's going to hook up for the Robbie. Mm-hmm. And so the next thing is that she goes down to Robbie's cabin and she's like, <laughs> hello, lover boy, or something. <laughs> and he's she opens hooking the up door. with another girl. Uh, yeah. Um. So that's a whole thing. So Robbie and Lisa do not work out. Um, mm-hmm. And at this point, um, Robbie had like, their, their father and Robbie had already been like starting to bond, and it was yeah. a whole that was a whole like side because kind Robbie's of, going to medical school, yeah, and the father's a doctor. And that was so. a whole side kind of thing, is their relationship, yeah. Um, so oh, yeah, so baby spends the night again with Swayze, <laughs> right? and the next morning they're at breakfast, and somebody's talking about how a bunch of wallets have been stolen. Oh, I wonder, from, yes, and somebody is saying that johnny did it yes and baby's like no and they were like well he doesn't have a good alibi because he said he was in his room reading last night Mm. and baby's like no no that's not what it was but baby is like conflicted because her dad is sitting right there yeah (laughs) she's like i don't know what to do so she ends up saying that she was with johnny all night Mm -hmm. and she goes and she like um tries to look for him but she ends up falling asleep somewhere i don't know and he yeah. comes to find her and she and they end up firing him anyway yeah they figure because... out it's the old couple but they end up firing him anyway mm-hmm. um so johnny is leaving and the song in the background is she's like the wind by patrick swayze mm-hmm. i love that <laughs> oh by the way in the last scene the I, I have this written down. The person who ratted out Johnny for steal for and quote stealing the wallets was actually the woman. Oh yeah, yeah. There is a woman at the beginning of the movie who was always like, "Oh yeah, I've been taking dance lessons from Johnny," and yeah. she's like, "Really? Like like a creepy like yeah. wife?" Basically, really basically, him. Johnny uses these adulterous women to get more money. Yeah. Um. 
And that's, yeah. that's another so he line. rejected her in an earlier scene mm -hmm. and she saw a baby leave his cabin and so she pinned the crime yeah. on Johnny. How? So next. Next. Um, um oh Johnny, she's like the wind is still going. Yeah. Johnny's gone and baby's sitting on her bed upset and Lisa's like I'll do your hair for you. You might look pretty. And that line makes me so angry. And I wrote, she already looks pretty. Leave yeah. baby alone. She might look pretty. Um, so then we go to the talent show. Mm -hmm. Baby sitting in a corner. The corner. <laughs> with her parents. Lisa's <laughs> on stage. They're doing the final number. Yeah, and I wrote, Lisa is too much during this last song. <laughs> I can't. Voices, hearts, and hands. <laughs> I hate this song so much. I hate the song that they're singing because it's so annoying and repetitive. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my gosh. So during the song that they're singing, um, Johnny comes mm -hmm. in from the back. Yes. Oh my gosh. And he goes over to Baby and her parents and he looks her dad straight in the eye and he's like, Nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> the iconic line. Mind you, let me set up the scene. She's okay. not really in a corner. No. <laughs> There's like this pillar. pillar on the wall, which kind of creates the smallest corner you've ever seen. Yeah. And she's just, she's not even yeah. leaning against it either. She's just sitting in her chair. And you know, like, they talk about this, this, the most iconic, one of the most iconic moments in the entire movie. Mm -hmm. uh, they talk about this in the documentary where... Patrick Swayze's um, widow was interviewed mm -hmm. and she was like yeah no Patrick always said that this was the most stupid line he's ever heard in his life <laughs> and then the writer the original writer of the script is like yeah I don't even know what that line is. yeah <laughs> um it's so so funny. Johnny takes baby up on stage and he's standing up for her. He's like, this this lady, like this this girl right this here. This is my woman. Yeah, she showed me how to be better and all this stuff, like in front of like everyone, like yeah. giving the speech off. Mm -hmm. And then it's time for the best song. I've had the time of my life by Bill Medley and Jennifer Warrens. Uh this song was original for this movie basically it was because so they could not figure out like what the final song for the movie would be yeah and so they had they talk about how this they had this giant bag of cassette tapes of original songs yeah. just sent in by people and this was the very last tape they listened to yeah and this is the one they used. And this was the night before they were shooting the scene, by the way. Yeah. It was, like, last In minute. rehearsals, Kenny Ortega, who choreographed this movie, who you might recognize from choreographing the high school musical movies and a bunch oh. of other decom movies. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he talked about how, in rehearsal, they would dance, they would do the choreography to a metronome. Yeah, a click track. I couldn't. How? I could never. I don't even know. Okay. Uh, so they start dancing. Yeah, it's, it's the dance that they've been practicing all Such summer. a good dance. Uh, her mom says, I think she gets this from me. And I'm just like, <laughs> what a queen. Oh, I, I. the next thing I have written in my notes is, don't jump off the stage. <laughs> don't jump off the stage. <laughs> Swayze jumps off the stage. They filmed this how many times? Like, they said so several many times. times. Uh, with Patrick's jacked up knee yeah and they did it like i wish i remembered what the exact number was but mm -hmm. they did it so many times and then patrick went up to kenny he like whispered in his ear like and I he's like i have me. one more in me and that was the take that that was the best take yeah. uh no patrick like went full out on everything he did mm -hmm. um yeah. Don't and jump off the stage. Don't jump off the stage. But this is a great dance. She does the lift. She does the lift. She successfully does beautiful. the lift. It's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Everybody's dancing. All the old people are up dancing. Oh my gosh. Um the band somehow knows the, the music. conductor. The conductor is back for yes. his second appearance. He's conducting He's this conducting. song that he's never heard before. Um, um even though oh wait. You know what? Wait, what? why is the conductor conducting? Because this is all on a track. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're playing backup or something. Like, I don't know. It happens. I'm sure. Uh, I, then my next note is Sweaty Man. So he's, mm -hmm. again, <laughs> sweaty, very sweaty. Swayze. <laughs> uh, but after this, um, the father, he offers up Robbie. Robbie. Yeah, yeah. He offers up yeah. Robbie the money he needs for his school. 
and then Robbie mentioned something about like, oh yeah, I'm so oh, glad yeah. you got uh, Penny out of, out of trouble. Like they they call her whole situation like, oh Penny's in trouble. Penny's or, in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> which is sure trouble. Um, um, yeah, and so her dad finally sees that yeah. Johnny's an okay guy. Yeah, he takes that- the money back from Robbie and he apologizes. Like he mans up and like when i'm wrong like i say i'm wrong yeah i i appreciate that yeah i appreciate nice. the scene a lot where mm-hmm. her dad owns up to his mistakes i yeah you know i like it a lot <laughs> what a good man yeah <laughs> um yeah and they end kissing on the dance floor and mm-hmm. it's marvelous um Beautiful. i have written down i want to know what they're up to today yeah like i wonder like the characters not the actors but right um rest in peace patrick swayze Mm -hmm. i love you (laughs) (laughs) but yeah no i would love to know what the characters are up to today yeah because you never know like she only talks about it like oh yeah that one summer like at the beginning of the movie so do that i want them to end up together i yeah we don't know we really don't know it could have just been like oh that's it yeah interesting yeah so that was dirty dancing it was I love that movie. 10 out of 10 recommend. It's great. Um, it is PG-13, so. <laughs> yes, you have to be 13. <laughs> you have to be 13. Ooh. Well, they have Devil's Tango insinuation, so. True. I mean, yeah. No, originally this movie was rated R. It was. Yes. It was. The MPAA gave them a rated R um, rating. But- <laughs> the MPAA gave them a rated R. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so they took the language out except for like a couple of splashes in there yeah um but it's really good it's one of my favorites so now we're gonna take a break and then we'll be back with sleepover Sleepover games Games. we're back yes yes Alrighty, welcome to Sleepover Games. Sleepover Games. Um, <laughs> this episode, we are going to be playing Kiss, Mary, Kill. Yes. So this is our like this is our big evil love day. It's not Valentine's Day, whatever it is, theme thing for yes. this episode. And I'm very excited about this game. I remember we used to play it at lunch back when we were allowed to roam the school and eat wherever we wanted, mm-hmm. and this was the highlight. Yes, I very I thoroughly <laughs> enjoy this game. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be doing two rounds. Mm-hmm. Of so game. we each have three, uh, either fictional characters or celebrities for each other, and we're going to read them off and we're going to play. And I'm very excited. So okay, who would like to go first? You. Okay, me. So round one, Kiss Mary Kill. I have Captain America, mm. Chandler Bing, and JoJo Siwa. Uh... Difficult. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> I would marry Chandler Bing. Okay. I would kiss the heck out of Captain America. <laughs> and Are you going to murder dear sweet JoJo Siwa? I guess so. Listen, I would kiss JoJo Siwa <laughs> in a heartbeat. But but you have Captain America. Uh, Captain America. <laughs> I see. I picked very difficult options for you. Yeah. So. Um. Hey, <laughs> what's your aunt? Okay, I have Tom Kenny. Oh, Interesting. <laughs> um, mm. Egg boy. Egg boy. Eggy boy. Oh, What's his name? Gunetama. Okay. Yeah. And Hello Kitty. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, Tom Kenny. <laughs> I, I don't want to ruin your legacy, but I'd kill you. Um, I guess... I'd marry Gudetama, because I don't have to really deal with him. He's lazy. <laughs> you know, I'll... I could eat him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Mmm, eggs, yummy. Mm. He's made lots of desserts and ramens and all kinds of things. So it's just unlimited meals. That's okay. a good thing. And I guess I'd kiss Hello Kitty, sure. Why not? <laughs> okay. Round two. Yeah. All right, would you like me to go first again? Sure. All right, this is my preferred round of the two. The first one I tried to come up with people you really enjoyed. Well, now I have people that I'm not quite so sure you enjoy. Wait, why did you put Jojo Siwa in there? Is that is it only purely because of the dream I had? No, I just know you like her. I mean, like, she's a queen. I love her. Yeah, of I mean, course. respect. So, are you ready? Yeah. 
Anakin Skywalker. No. <laughs> Caillou. No. Minecraft Steve. Okay, well. <laughs> now you have to choose. You put a freaking child in there. Well, Caillou, just, you gave me an egg and a cat. <laughs> yeah, but those Jojo, are so you fiction- have a child. Well, she's not like a child. child. Jojo, she was kid. like a year and a half younger than me. Yeah, well, you have to choose. <laughs> you put a child in there. Well, I'm gonna kill the child. <laughs> well, you'd kill Caillou anyways. And I guess I kill Anakin. <laughs> you because... can't kill him too. Oh, never mind. <laughs> See, it can be a nice like kiss on the forehead. Um, like, I wouldn't. Like, I will kiss. Hello, Hello Kitty doesn't have a mouth. There is no, I will there's kiss. nothing to kiss. <laughs> she has a mouth. No, she does not. Uh, you know, have you seen it. the Hello Kitty cartoons? Never mind. She has a mouth. She has a mouth. But in most occasions, she doesn't um, have a mouth. I guess I'll kiss Anakin Skywalker because it's like a one-time thing, <sighs> and then I'll marry Minecraft Steve because I don't have anything against him. <laughs> Fair enough. I'd also marry Minecraft. I could. I, I'll. I can live with him. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, whatever. <laughs> okay, we have Starscream. Oh, oh no. We have Kylo Ren. Mm, okay. And we have Ramin from Phantom. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <are you> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm going to kill Kylo Ren, because he's my least favorite of the bunch. Boo. I know, bad. Uh, I would kiss the Phantom, and I would marry Starscream for old times. <laughs> um, I'm not going to get into that. No thanks. No one will know. <laughs> no one all. will know. <laughs> yep. That was fun. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the ones you picked. That was good. Your last round was great. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was sleepover games. It was. So next we have shout outs. Shout outs and, and questions. questions. So shout outs. We got I'll go first. Okay, yeah, you so go first. Morgan, thank you so much for shouting us out. On oh, we Instas. miss you. We we love you very, very much and we can't wait to see you again. Yo 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 and our second shout out is for our hype girl Madison, Madison again, on Insta. Who likes all of our posts, who comments on everything. She is there. She is in it. Yes. Everyone needs to be like Madison. Heck yes, yeah. agreed. So please continue sharing. Uh, those are the only shout outs we have today, but mm-hmm. please share. Yep. And we we greatly you appreciate it. No, okay, time. now I have questions. So I asked for questions twice this week. So the first half of the questions I asked were for like Valentine's Day themed questions. Mm-hmm. And then the second half were just regular questions. Yeah. So the first question is, what is the, f- what is, <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> what is favorite to Valentine's card ever received? Yes. Okay. This is difficult. Because mm-hmm. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I save every single thing somebody gives me. So, mm-hmm. like, any piece of paper anybody gives me. Um, so, this took a while to think about. So, I don't necessarily have a favorite, but I'm just going to tell a funny story about a Valentine's Day card. Okay. So, once upon a time in first grade, uh, nobody liked me except for this one boy who had, like, a crush on me for some reason. <laughs> I was the new kid in first grade. Like, yeah. I moved in, like, almost halfway through the year, and I was weird homeschooler kid who told everybody Santa Claus wasn't real and so (laughs) um yes but there was this one guy who had a crush on me for some reason and it was Valentine's Day Mm -hmm. and he was concocting this craft and he turns to me and he goes Julia what are your favorite colors and I'm like uh pink and purple <laughs> and he turns around and he's like hey to whoever was sitting behind us do you have a pink and purple marker Aww, and that's so cute. he did that and then he had to leave early that day I remember and so he slid it into my cubby and mm-hmm. at the end of the day we went to our cubbies and I got it out and I had a Valentine's Day card from this guy oh so nice and I haven't talked to him since first grade <laughs> Because I got glasses, and then he didn't like me anymore after that. Um, So, recently, I was on, like, a really weird, like, cleaning kick, and I was cleaning all of my closets and my room and my bookshelf and all this stuff, 
and I found an old Valentine's card. I don't remember what the rest of the context of the card was, but one line I specifically remember, and I remember telling, I think I told Marty about it as soon as I read it, is, you're nice, I guess. <laughs> and I don't, I'll, I will never forget that. <laughs> Because it reminds me of when me and Marty, we first started dating. Um, I guess this is a story time, too. Um, the night that we decided to tell each other we liked each other, I was like, yeah, I like you. Like, you're nice and cute, whatever. And he said, and I quote, me too, I guess. And I will hold that against him for the rest of my life. We have been together for, in a couple months, it will be three years. And I still have me too i guess echoing against the tiny brain in my head oh yes <laughs> next question what did we do for evil love day <laughs> uh came back to school yes. i didn't do anything um, i got mad at my speech teacher and <laughs> um on the actual valentine's day no i didn't do anything either yeah but the saturday before that um i had a nice little date with marty um we got Chinese food for lunch. We ate that. Um, we played the new Mario Bowser's Fury game. Um, I, I didn't allow him to open it until he came over. So we got to enjoy that, which that game is super cute. And I can't wait to play it again. Um, and that's all we did. We had grander plans. Oh, I made him cheesecake. That was fun. Um, we had grander plans, but we were going to save that for this weekend. Now it's snow and ice everywhere. So maybe next weekend. <laughs> yeah we'll see uh the day before i also did stuff the day before valentine's day we we didn't do much mm -hmm. uh shane came over and he gave me gifts which oh, yeah. i told him gifts too no i didn't get him anything oh because i told him i was like i'm not getting you anything that's he's part like, of the curse it's he's not like, like a mean girlfriend he's thing. like good <laughs> so yeah hey we're coming up on a year i'll get him all kinds of crap next month mm -hmm. so um, but we did that. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yes, that just, like, shook me. I was like, oh my goodness, it has been a year. Mm -hmm. Which also means it's been a year of, uh, shutdown. Wow. Yeah. yeah, they started dating right at the beginning of COVID. Like, right, like, like as right soon as at they the beginning. stopped seeing each other is when they started dating. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't see each other for the first month of our relationship. Month and a half of yeah. our relationship, which I think is really funny, but that's a different story um yeah and we caught up on wandavision i love that show and then what did we do i don't even remember i remember <laughs> getting cheese sticks and tater tots from sonic at some point mm -hmm. but yeah we just hung out it was super chill mm -hmm. yeah that's Good about times. it I don't like extravagant plans now our next question is from the man himself the Shane. man himself <laughs> um it is, will Julia ever accept it as Valentine's Day? Mm, or will it be Evil Love Day to you forever? Well, I think, well, here's the thing, is that I have only been calling it Evil Love Day until this last week. I have allowed myself to call it Valentine's Day. I heard Day. at the beginning of the episode, you did call it Valentine's I Day. I did. It was very jarring to me. Yeah. So, you know what? Maybe. Maybe. I think the curse might be broken, guys. Maybe. All right. Next question. I knocked <laughs> she the... knocked on my wood stairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's the end of the Valentine's Day questions. Now we're into some other questions. Yes. Um, which is better, knights or pirates? Hmm. I've never sat and thought about this before. Um, knights, 100%. Okay. I saw this question and was like, that's easy. Hmm. <laughs> I also think I have to go with knights just because I'm not a fan of drunk sea people i'm more into drunk land people i guess <laughs> <laughs> with swords drunk land people with swords uh pirates have swords they don't matter <laughs> knights <laughs> <laughs> um no i like knights um i don't know i think i grew up with the you know like the fairy tale like the, princess knight kind of yeah thing. so yeah. that's kind of my vibe about that i think knights are really cool i agree I love um, Renaissance festivals Ooh, and yes. seeing the knights oh, there yeah. and that was a, seeing yeah. them compete. <laughs> so, yeah, I like knights. Next question. Ice or snow? snow. That was all that was there. 
Um, I don't know how to interpret this question. Do you mean like which do we prefer or which was outside? Because for the majority <laughs> of the week it was ice. ice until last night's was snow. Yeah. Um, well, obviously I prefer snow because I'd rather not Same. die on my way home uh, tomorrow. Um, when this episode com- comes out, we will be leaving the premises, hopefully. <laughs> and yeah. I, Snow ice is, is scary and slippery, and we yeah. almost died going up the stairs to our dorm several times when we had to escape to get food. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So snow is much better. Um, next question is, what are favorite childhood TV shows? This is, there is no question. It is SpongeBob SquarePants all the way. I, okay, there's a few ways I could answer this question. Okay. Do you mean, like at the time or like right now or as a favorite childhood tv show what show did you watch as a child that you are currently dora, thinking was your favorite dora the explorer dora. Oh, i was yes. obsessed you have lots of dora influence in you t- like nowadays <laughs> <laughs> i made it tr- i made it a tradition in our theater classes in high school that i had to play dora at least yes. once every year and she was spectacular at it would you mind giving us no, your best dora i really don't want to actually okay um, I no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some other time. <laughs> um, favorite book. Favorite book. Bruh, I have no idea. I can't think of anything. The either. first thing that like came we to talked my- about in the last uh, question thing, we we have no idea. I the first thing that came to my mind when I saw it was the Be More Chill novel, hmm. because I've read it three times now. <laughs> well, that would qualify as a favorite book. Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I, it's really good. Mm, I can't really think of anything. Um, like I said in the last episode, I don't really, like, read a lot nowadays, aside from, like, sheet music. Um, but going off of the childhood thing, maybe your favorite childhood book could be an alternate question. And I love the Junie B. Jones the monster- and the Dork Diary Bro, Junie B. Jones, what's your favorite Junie B. Jones book? <gasps> That's a hard question. Mine's the Christmas book. The Christmas book. Oh, I have that one. Um, shoot, what was it? I like the fruitcake one. Oh yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, uh, I loved Junie B. Jones. Oh, a series that I read all the time as a kid was the Boxcar Children. I had hmm. every single book in that series, and there's like, like at least a hundred. Um, I like the Diary of a Wimpy Kid and the Dork Diary. Like, they're yeah. both separate series. I never read I really the Dork Diaries. Them. I never got into that. I had all of them up to, I think, the last two. Yeah. I liked... Oh, uh, shoot. Oh, another good childhood book is The Monster at the End of This Book featuring uh, Grover. Oh, yes. It's yes, probably yes, my yes, favorite yes. picture book of all time. Yes, it's a picture book. She showed it to me one time, and it's hilarious. It's so good. <laughs> it still slaps to this day. It still slaps. Another good picture book is um, Pete the Cat, the shoes book. Do you know that? No. I love my white shoes. I love my white <laughs> shoes. It comes with a song. There were so many good, like, childhood, like, picture books and stuff. Or just, like, old, like, baby, baby books that I love. Yeah. I have a whole section of my bookshelf dedicated to the ones that I still have. Like, I don't know if you ever read Chicka Chicka Boom Boom and, like, watched the movie afterwards. No. <gasps> oh, that slapped. The song was a bop. Um, That could be my repeat of the week. If we can find that on Spotify, I want that on the playlist. Um, and Slugs in Love was a good one. So many good childhood books. Um, the Bible for Kids. Bible for Kids. <laughs> favorite book. All right. Yeah, those are it. our favorite books. I think that's all the questions. Um, I would love book recommendations, though. Oh, please. Yes. We need to start reading again. We need to expand our small brains. Yes. I'm really trying to because, you know, I need to take time for myself, but, like, not that's not on the internet. So I'm yeah. trying to, like, start reading again because mm-hmm. it's been a little while. So yeah. I would love book recommendations. And I can already hear Eileen DMing me asking her <laughs> to <laughs> 
Ailey is one of our friends, and I'm going to give her a free shout out. But yes. she has her, her own, own book series. Book she's series. an author. She's, she's so cool. She's so cool. I love Ailey. She's so doing much. all kinds of things. Like her art is awesome. I've seen how she's progressed over Instagram. It's amazing. And she's working on her own series right now. Mm-hmm. But she has her books. And can't you buy them on Amazon? I think think so at one point i know you could so yeah if they're still um, there what do you know what the title of them are no from? but i'm gonna dm her in a minute we will and, shout it out on instagram or oh yeah afterwards. we'll put it all over instagram because she's amazing she's so incredibly talented buy her book <laughs> if you can yes yes she's our unofficial sponsor for this episode right oh now. <laughs> uh, no, she's not sponsoring us we're doing this for free um i love you eily and i would love to read your book sometime so um yeah so hit us up with book recommendations Mm -hmm. and that's all we got for today tune in next week when we will be doing something something you you never know what it'll be it'll it will be something i don't even know what it will be we have no spoilers or teasers for you no our heads are (gasps) or do we do we do Do you have your driver's license because i got mine oh my to roll into the next movie (laughs) That was gross. Okay, we're done. This is it. Over okay. Again. Follow Bye. us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us this week on Pop Culturing My Best Friend. Tune in next time when we talk about more stuff and things. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Instagram at popculturingmybff_podcast for behind-the-scenes content and more. Thank you.